Where do you go for truth? Where do you go for for truth? Nicodemus became a follower of Jesus because he was able to settle one thing in his heart, and that was this. Did Jesus have the truth, and did Jesus have the authority? And once he settled that in his heart, he knew he could trust in Jesus for everything. So where do you go for truth? Who do you listen to for truth? And how do you determine if something is true or it's a lie? Because we have a truth problem in our culture today. Amen? And not just a truth problem, we have an trust and authority problem in our world today. Our culture has lost its ability to discern truth from lie. Our culture has a confusion about who to trust in authority. You see, most people trust themselves as their own authority, and so they determine their own truth based on whether or not it resonates with them or not, or who they know, who they trust, believes in it as well. But what we should be doing, men and women, is following Nicodemus' example and putting our trust in Jesus and his words as rabbi, as the authority. And then testing if things are true based on whether or not it has evidence in the real world, not whether or not it just resonates with me or not. Have you given every part of your life to Jesus and his authority? Uh, and not just the spiritual parts, but the other parts, like how we use our time and our personal wealth and how we raise our kids and what we think about our spouse after 10, 15, 20 years of marriage and all the other things, the things we watch and the things we put into our life. Does Jesus have authority even in those areas of your life? Have you given authority over to Jesus? And what's the benefit of letting Jesus be your authority? It's my favorite part of the passage. It's the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Because Nicodemus was drawn to Jesus' miracles before he was drawn to Jesus' truth. You see, Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit in chapter, in verse, uh, in chapter 3, verse 8. He says this right below in the passage. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Jesus says the reason why he could do signs and wonders and miracles was because of the Holy Spirit. You cannot see the wind, Jesus says. You cannot see the Spirit, and you cannot see eternal life. But you can see its impact on a person when it comes into a person's life. Now here's the key. The power of the Spirit is always connected to dependence on Jesus' authority. They always go hand in hand. There is no power of the Spirit if there is no belief and trust in the authority of Jesus' word and authority to lead our lives. Amen? And so for us, it is a desire to see more of God's power in our life, in our churches, for men and women to discover Jesus, for people to be ignited on fire, young adults to have passion for Jesus and our culture to be renewed. We must continue to put our trust and our faith in Jesus' word, his teachings, and his authority in our life.